The last material we'll talk about today is honey carbon. Honey carbon. Woo! That's some good shit. Hey guys, this is Mike Loom with Professional Awesome Racing. Today we're starting a new series called DIY Downforce. If you haven't already, go check out the website where we have a blog post called DIY Downforce. It's an intro to a lot of this information, but this series is gonna go more in depth on how to design, build, and mount a splitter and other aerodynamic equipment on your car. So I suggest you like and subscribe so you can learn along the way with us on how to build the most possible downforce for the best possible value. So for this first video, we're gonna talk about five materials that most people use. Generally, we got plywood, we got ABS, alumilite, aluminum, and some kind of carbon or carbon honeycomb. Um, we're gonna start by going down the list from the cheapest to most expensive, and we'll talk about stiffness, we'll talk about other factors that help us choose what material we would use in different situations. The first material we'll talk about is plywood. You can get plywood at basically any hardware store. There's a lot of advantages, like I said, the first one being that it's cheap. It's easy to find. For us, we recommend something around a 3 8 Some people use half inch. It just depends on how much front downforce you wanna make. Um, what's great about plywood is that it's easy to cut. It has a pretty decent strength and stiffness. Um, downgrade is that it's heavy. We all know that, but that's the point. It's cheap, it's robust, it is what it is. I suggest getting a marine grade type plywood and then sealing it in some way so that you don't get fluid in it and ruin that. Um, some cool ways to seal it are some stain, make it look awesome, wood is awesome on a race car. Another option is bed liner. That'll help stiffen up the material as well as make it resistant to cracks and getting hit and that, those types of things. The second material we'll talk about is ABS plastic. ABS can be found at plastic retailers or sign shops. Sometimes even something like a hardware store, Home Depot, or something along those lines. If you're gonna buy it, we suggest something in quarter inch thick, as that is a good strength to weight ratio. What's cool about ABS compared to the other materials is that you can mold it and it's malleable with a little bit of heat. The one downside is that it gets a little brittle when it gets fluid on it, and as well, it's a little bit heavy. The third material we'll talk about is alumilite. So we get a lot of questions on where to buy alumilite, and you can buy it at sign shops near you. So call those people up and see if you can find anything. Um, it's easy to work with. It's got a good strength to weight ratio. We really like this material. We use it uh, pretty extensively in our car. We use it for our whole under tray. Um, if you're gonna get it for the front splitter, we suggest 10 millimeter for any car that goes over 100 miles per hour and six, mil six millimeter for any car that goes under 100 miles per hour. Um, one caveat of Alumilite is that it's only strong in one direction. So the corrugation goes in one direction. So it's, it basically folds in one direction and it bends in the other. So it's strong in the bending direction. It's weak in the folding direction. Um, if you'd like to go buck wild and have a lot of fun with it, you can take two sheets of six millimeter uh, Alumilite and you can lay them 90 degrees to each other and make something that's strong in both directions. Um, we've done that, that's a, that's a great option. Also, if you just like one that's pre-made, we sell six millimeter Alumilite splitters pre-made. If you'd like one, just email us. It says sales of professional loss. The fourth material we'll talk about is aluminum. Um, this is just basically your standard sheet aluminum. You can get it at most uh, metal supply stores. So if they've got steel, a lot of times they'll have aluminum. If you're gonna buy the aluminum, we suggest going with something like an eighth to three sixteenths in thickness that'll give it enough strength to weight ratio um, to really work well. What's great is that it's easy, relatively easy, to cut into basic shapes. As well, if you wanna make something more 3D, you can cut and weld and make basically anything that you can possibly imagine out of that aluminum. Um, if you'd like to get the aluminum, we suggest sticking with some of the stronger grades of aluminum, something like a 6061, a 5052, or a 7075. Uh, if you'd like to bend it and shape it, something like a 3003 is a little bit easier to bend and shape, uh, which is an option, but it is also, um, because it's more malleable, it will bend and deflect a little easier. So stick with those higher grades of aluminum that are a little bit stronger if you're gonna make a blade out of it. So the last material we'll talk about is carbon honeycomb, or even a carbon sheet. Uh, there's a lot of options there. This is a this is a big broad category, so it's really hard to nail it down. 
The biggest thing about carbon is that it's expensive compared to the rest of these materials. If you're gonna get something that's just a sheet that you're then gonna turn into a splitter, we suggest something at least a half an inch or maybe even an inch. Um, obviously, the pros are a great uh, weight uh, to stiffness ratio. Um, it's, it's a little bit harder to work with. We suggest wearing a mask and safety equipment if you're gonna cut it. But overall, it's gonna be the lightest for the most strength. It's just gonna cost a lot more than the rest of these materials here. So you can get those online at different retailers or find a local carbon guy who maybe has some sheets that they make otherwise. So with these five options it really comes down to stiffness, weight, and price. Obviously we know that the carbon honeycomb is gonna be the lightest and the wood's gonna be the heaviest, but the carbon honeycomb is 10 times the cost as the wood. So really you have to make that decision for yourself. For us, we generally gravitate towards the wood and or the alumilite. Like I said, most of our car is alumilite. Our newest splitter is actually made out of wood. So whatever works best for you, we'll go through the building process next so that you can see what we do to those materials after the fact to ensure that we get the best possible outcome. So for the next part in this series, we're gonna use one of our off the shelf Alumilite splitter blanks. It's a material we use often and we like it a lot. We think it offers a good strength to weight ratio. So that's where we're going with this. We're gonna use some of our components and we're gonna build a splitter. We'll go through the important decisions you need to make to get the most amount of downforce for the best possible value. Because realistically, if you're gonna go through all this work, why wouldn't you get the best possible results?